brief disclaimer as we begin well, this list of things to do in Nairobi it's not exhaustive I probably need to do other videos the only order I've used is uh, considering the previous videos on the Nairobi National Park we see what you can see just close by that area and as you move out to the Greater Nairobi The David Shedrick Wildlife Trust was founded in 1977 by Daphne Shedrick in honor of her husband, David Shedrick. It is a great place for you to see orphaned elephants as they are fed and rehabilitated so that they can be taken back into the wild. It's actually probably the first place you should visit after the National Park. It's an exciting place, but the only thing is that it's has a very limited view and um, and currently with COVID it's even worse where you have to pre-book before you go there and my understanding is that you might need almost three months advance booking. Next in our list is the Giraffe Center, started in 1979 by Jock Leslie Melville and his wife Betty. It was started after they had bought the Giraffe Manor, which you can be able to see as a backdrop at this point, which is a small hotel that was actually started in uh, or constructed back in 1932. Later they established in 1979 this Giraffe Center for the purpose of being a feeding center and a breeding center for the endangered Rothschild giraffe which is found only in the East African savanna. The giraffe center is where you can easily come and feed the giraffes. It's something I would recommend you passing by. It's very family friendly. But yeah, you still have to be careful uh, because the, the, if you meet the wrong giraffe, they can actually give you a good headbutt, which can be dangerous. So here is a male giraffe approaching and uh, you can see how the smaller female giraffes uh, all of a sudden start running away. when he came in most of the food was gone but uh, though you, you might be afraid of the head but he's actually based on what on the guides there they say he's actually a very gentle giant and um, very approachable and uh, you can even see my friend Martin being able to uh, she was taught how to feed it and uh, you can see that he's actually a very <laughs> friendly giraffe you have a red bear in here. It's like that there, right? But let's watch the Jewish movie, right? Oh. The one which Jesus oh. was placed as a crown. This was the first that he was Later on, when she turned 18, she enrolled herself at the Royal Copenhagen Academy where she went to study arts and literature. So the Karen Blixen uh, Museum is located 10 kilometers outside of uh, the Nairobi CBD at the foot of the Ngong Hills. It is a former African home of the late Danish author 
uh, Karen Blixen, who is famous for writing uh, the Out of Africa back in 1937, which was later adopted into a movie uh, that won several Academy Awards, uh, and where she was depicted by Meryl Streep. So the, it's a museum which was uh, actually donated to the Kenyan government back in 1963 after the independence. It's actually a place where you can go and have great photo shoots. They have many trees, some of them that are more than 100 years old. The Nairobi Mamba village is uh, also located around the current area and uh, it's an area that covers more than 30 acres and it's famous for the crocodile farm that uh, they have there where you can be able to see more than 70 Nile crocodiles. You can see them when they're very tiny, some that are uh, different ages and even uh, the massive older ones. an opportunity to learn a lot they also have a great guide who at times even jumps into the crocodile infested area but yes there's a lot you can learn the guides are very very knowledgeable and the information you can get can be surprising at times yeah yes just hope it doesn't like swing the leg swing the, the, the tail uh, if they lose a tooth is he old he grow another one at whatever age Mm. Oh, she's not young, yeah, she's mature. Uh -huh. yeah. You see, the mouth is open and you still do not see inside. The where, where is the tongue? Their tongue mm. sticks inside and is modified to form a palatal valve. Mm. So that when in the water, they don't let in water. Mm. When especially hunting fish. Mm. Does she see us? Yes, yes, yes. yes. She's aware you're there. But it was waiting for you to make uh, to put the my wrong hand. move. To put my hand inside. Yeah. Just take your hand. She's try. waiting for my hand. Yes. <laughs> try her and she'll be very happy to get a snack. Mm. What I do is bite and then spin. Mm. Rip it apart. So if you do, they will be eaten. Mm. Now what they do, they lay a lot, a lot of eggs. No, I think 20 it. to 90 eggs each crocodile, once mm. in a year. He thought it's bull. <laughs> <gasps> wow, an hour was so big. Who wants the big one? Who gives this one? It's better. Yeah. Wow. 
we are also able to see other reptiles and like tortoises get to uh, touch them and uh, or hold them and also get to learn more about the it's because it's all that became uh, gray and white <laughs> this is, uh, no, this one. because of the uh, friction when they're mating yeah, the shell mouth, the mouth, the female, 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 don't disturb me. the yeah. <laughs> fed up of you. <laughs> All the time paparazzi that you are. <laughs> After that you can actually go and feed the ostriches, um, get to interact with them, you're given like some leaves and and you're able to feed them. Hello girls, how are you? It's a place I would recommend you visit if you've never seen an African crocodile or a Nile crocodile. You can see how big and massive they are. So the Nairobi National Museum was actually established back in 1911 by some people who had interest in the nature in British uh, East Africa. If you've been fortunate enough to watch all my videos, you probably have watched the one on the National Museum. I did a segment on this. I can tell you that there's a bit of difference uh, since, uh, since the pandemic started and uh, right now they have a restricted flow and uh, using footprints or on the ground they direct you on how you should be able to uh, view the museum it's no longer what it used to be which was more or less you decide where you wanted to go and what you wanted to see this one you go through like a series where they take you through the different artifacts After that, we went to the snake park, which has also kind of changed. I think it's become smaller since we are there, uh, but you could still see uh, some snakes. And um, I mean, I have had an issue always trying to film the snakes in the in the glass behind the glass. Uh, I don't know why. Every time I think I recorded when I go back, I check my footage, and I don't see that I don't know why it happens. <laughs> I've tried to do it uh, like twice now and I never captured like the black mamba and the rest. Somehow uh, something happens. I think I'm recording while I'm not. As I said, it really kind of scares you when you initially look and you can't see a thing and then all of a sudden you start seeing so many snakes that you are not noticed them before and just cares you how well these animals are able to camouflage themselves in the wild and can make you think twice about just walking anywhere where you know snakes are For those who've not seen it, um, I decided to still include the great um, snake hunt of the chameleon, and it's still one of my favorites uh, thing to see at the uh, the snake park.
The Nairobi Railway Museum was established back in 1979 by the East African Railways and is still operated by the Kenya Railways. It's a good place you can go and learn a lot about the history of the rail, which is actually one of the most important things that actually established the nation because uh, when the British came and uh, set up the railway from Mombasa to across all the way to Uganda, a lot of the developments, if you notice, a lot of the cities and towns, major towns are actually located at, uh, along this railway line and so it's um, it's a great place to come and see the different trains how they used to be how they in also interconnected with even ships and other things to bring cargo and and uh, transport things and out in and out of the country i've always seen it in music videos and uh, when we were there we were lucky enough to see um, some guys trying to shoot a music video which i hope went well uh, a lot of people have done um, even uh, photo shoots and uh, music videos in this particular museum. Uh, the good thing about it is not very crowded. So uh, on a Sunday like this, we were there. We were more or less the only people touring at the time, and it's a great place uh, to take your kids. Who like my kid really loves the uh, trains. And uh, when he was here, he felt like he was in heaven. Train heaven. I mean, because there are trains all over, big trains, you know. He loves to watch, obviously, the kids show, uh, Thomas and his friends. Uh, we didn't take a guide, I think, which would have been good for learning. But since we were there mostly for our son to enjoy, I think it went well. The first six sites have actually been very close to Nairobi. So now we're going a bit further out of the CBD and some of the other areas where you can still have some great fun activities. So the Whistling Morans is actually a restaurant towards the River, Kenya area. And it's a great place to bring your family. The first time we were there was back in 2020, actually, just a few days before um, the first case of uh, COVID had been discovered in the country and before it went into lockdown. So at this point, as you see, we no one was having masks at the time. Um, we were having a lot of fun with the family and um, also there were some kids who came in to do the, uh, their swimming lessons at the, at the time and my son really had a great time. The pool there is actually tiny, it's, it's small and it's very shallow so it's not a place you can go and dive in but it's a swim, you can swim and just have fun, uh, relaxing. Looking for in
Do they have good food, which uh, we enjoyed as a family uh, after our trip from the national park. This is where we came to. Yeah, big boy. Where you going now? I'm going go go kart boy. Later, we went to the GP cutting together with my brother and my sister-in-law, my wife and kid. And uh, my sister-in-law actually agreed to uh, also drive. So we did a race uh, around the truck. Hey, hey. Yes, hey, is that Lillian at the bar? sad thing is uh, my GoPro the way I'd set it up initially it was perfectly set up but then when I switched it on I, at some point I doubted that it was on so I kept fidgeting with it and at some point I moved it to the <laughs> to, to some side that you could not even see uh, that clearly but uh, luckily a few shots would, I would get when I'm being overtaken or I'm overtaking someone uh, and uh, yeah but it was actually an awesome race uh, around the track and um, I would recommend it to anyone.
The Lukenya Motocross is located uh, near Athi River, uh, not too far from Lukenya Gateway. And um, though I've been in the area so many times and even even eaten at the place, um, it, this was the first time for me to go and do the uh, motocross uh, and uh, I can, the quad bike and the rest, it was just fun. So we were there later in the evening so we could not do a long drive around the general Kenya area and so this was just limited to the area they have inside Look at uh, but uh, they start you off with a very strict uh, you know they give you instructions not to mess the quad bikes the quad bikes have a speed limit of around 20 which you're not supposed to go over and they want you to be careful not to mess the quad bikes so they have a very expensive uh, penalty in case you go flaunting the rules or if you mess up the quad bikes. I think it was almost a million shillings you'd have to fix. That's almost $10,000. Well, it was fun doing it, uh, going around uh, the truck. Uh, I decided my son should be with the uncle because uh, this was my first time doing this quad bike and uh, the uncle actually knows how to ride a motorcycle. I don't. So like, uh, he would probably be better off. Uh, but I think I would have still done it well with my son. minute ride and um, yeah it was fun I would recommend it to everyone yes so that's uh, something you can put it on your list as you're going further out of uh, Nairobi So Paradise Lost has been a very important um, fun place for us to go as a family we went when we were kids with my dad and mom. It's a place where I took my wife for many dates and even when she was pregnant um, with the uh, uh, child and even when the kid got was still small. It's a place we've gone so many times. But the last time I went I was actually back in 2020 and uh, this was actually during the COVID uh, time we just uh, when it, things had started slowly opening up a bit we decided to visit this place and since we knew it was going to be outdoors we knew we could uh, be as careful and uh, free as possible to do many things And my son, the last time he, had, he was here, he was very young, so this time he got to run around and have a lot of fun and really enjoyed himself.
we discovered we also uh, a family that loves adventure so we went and did zip lining and uh, it was a lot of fun There are many many activities you can do in this uh, place uh, you can do boat rides you can also do um, you can ride the horses there you can also ride a camel so you can play games if you come with a team they have a great waterfall as well a cave system uh, which is said to have been used by the Mau Maus as they were face, uh, fighting the British uh, there's a lot of things, there's camping as well that you can do within the Paradise Lost. This is a place I would recommend, there's, there are many areas you can sit and, and, and eat and you know have fun as a family. So the Panari uh, Hotel is a hotel just along the Mombasa Road, which is the main road when you're coming in from the airport. The hotel has um, obviously restaurants. It's more like a hotel come mall because it has a lot of things you can do once you're there, uh, not just for accommodation for the rest. Um, it has a segmented area where people who are coming into the hotel they can go straight to that uh, you know but then they have an, a mall area where you can go and eat in the restaurants buy things they have like some uh, supermarkets and they also have a movie area called the younger cinema which um, uh, it's a great area to watch movies i've actually screened some movie there 
it's also famous for the solar ice rink which is the only uh, ice rink uh, that is very close to the equator um, I think there's another one closer there is maybe the Nigerian one but that one is more of a synthetic uh, ice rink this one is actually ice that they they prepare and uh, I think it's the ice is area is around minus 25 degrees the general area is around 12 degrees so it's a cold place and obviously for this reason during COVID it's been shut for the most part but um, the ice rink is a place you can go and teach yourself how to skate i started learning how to ice skate uh, when i was around 32 years old and um, i mean i had many falls and many things and, and for me the main thing was to just be able to get to a point where i can even maybe play a game of ice hockey which i did and nearly killed myself <laughs> Is coming to visit. No, he wouldn't miss this in Christmas times. Oh, 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 and the sun said it is just get better on a blanket with the skyline painted in blue. Ooh, yeah, that's what we do. We'll be chilling and having a good, good time. And since I stopped my training, I probably would have been able to be very good. Uh, but uh, since I kind of stopped training um, after a while, uh, probably didn't pick up to the level that you can see these guys playing at. But uh, uh, for this, because of this ice rink, we've been able to get a, a Kenyan ice hockey team called the Kenyan Ice Lions. And um, they, they've gone to Canada, they've gone to the Winter Olympics. There's a lot they've been able to experience. They have their own jersey, which uh, somehow actually very, I mean, many people used to buy even from outside. Since these guys have been playing with experts who, you know, from Canada, US, and other European countries that play ice hockey, uh, they were able to actually bring up their game. <laughs> and um, I would recommend it to anyone. <laughs> <laughs>